testing. Okay. What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday morning. If you're not familiar with this show, we used to do it in the past, bringing it back a little bit because I enjoy it. What we're doing today is we're going to be showing 3D design, specifically aimed at 3D printing. 3D printers, super common now, but if you don't design your own parts, then you're not getting the full, uh, the full usage of your 3D printer. So I just wanna show you a little bit of how useful they can be without as much, it doesn't have to be as difficult as it sounds. And today we're gonna to try and take it back to a very, a simpler start. I'm not gonna just go wild. I'm gonna try and show you, you know, a somewhat basic idea of 3D printing or of 3D design, so, sorry. So that is the plan for today. Hopefully you all are, uh, are ready. I am using Fusion 360. And it's being a little funny this morning, so let's hope that that is not a trend. I'm going to get switched over to it here in a second as I'm just waiting for it to churn through some stuff. So, um, that's, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Josh condolences Nicole for what's going to happen to her team today. The Chiefs could do it. The Chiefs could do it. Let's see. All right. Um, like I said, we are... Uh, using Fusion 360, you can see the this black portion here on the left side, not supposed to be there. It's being a little funny. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm just waiting on for the moment until that it was working fine, started getting some things cleared out and then all of a sudden it's doing this to me. So uh, the worst, of course, the worst case scenario with how, uh, <laughs> how these things work. Uh, will this be added to Thingiverse? So what we're going to do today specifically is I've got my, the base of my class two truck here. This is a, um, a brazen scale ATL chassis. Now I switched to the cliffhanger body and on Friday night I did a live stream where I was doing a bunch of work to this thing. And that's when I switched to this body and I did some just very basic, like the most basic of body mounting system, you know, basically screwing a body post in through an available hole. And I want to fix that today by designing some parts that will hold things more secure. And I'll show you exactly why as Fusion gets its act together. But this is going to be what and why we're doing. Um, so I'm going to pull this body off. The truck did really well at the comp yesterday. So um, I'm super happy with all the changes we made, but this body mounting setup. So you can see see those front body posts, how they're angled back already. That's just because the body's moving around and these things can, can rotate because they're held in by a single screw. Now, the other thing is, is that we already drilled holes in this body for these body positions, which means we need to keep that. So we're going to keep these positions both front and rear. And that's why that's what we're going to do. Um, while you're doing that, can you add the G speed files too? Yes, I will try and get that done. I have that file open already as well. Okay. So let's see. Fusion has resolved its issue. We're going to switch over. Um, let's try, let's see if this works. Hey, my overhead camera does work today. What do you know? Um, I know that cuts off a little bit of your view, but um, I think for what I'm trying to show you, uh, some of that will be useful. We'll switch back and forth a little bit so I can make sure and show you as much as possible. Uh, but first, starting off, this is a blank Fusion document. Fusion 360 is free uh, to for most people with a hobbyist license. You get it free for a year, and then after that you have to renew it which you still can do. It makes it seem like you have to pay, but you don't, you can get through it. I have a paid version because I use it for um, my CNC router here, which I want some of the extra features that it has. So anyway, that's a bit of the startup of this. Now, one thing that I'm going to recommend if you're gonna design your own parts, is get yourself a, a set of calipers. You can get a cheap set off Amazon. This is a nicer set, but 
get yourself a set pair of calipers and that's it's just you need that you can do it with a ruler but you're not going to be as accurate get yourself a pair of calipers and you'll be good to go so the big thing is is that what we need is we need to just we have known points basically what we're doing we're just doing fancy connect the dots that's all we're trying to do so and we just have to decide how we want to think about this project so for this we know that we need to make or how I want to tell you is that I want to, we're going to start with the front one here. I know that I need to keep these body posts in the same spot. And I know that I need to bolt them through the holes on the sides of the chassis. That is really, that's it. So we just need to figure out our approach to be able to put all of that into the computer. So, Let's do it by, we just have to pick a side. We're either gonna start from the top or we're gonna start from the side. It, it's completely personal preference. Since we have the chassis, I'm gonna start from the side. Now, I have to pick a few holes here to decide which ones I'm going to use. I know that, so let's just start by thinking about the chassis. So we're gonna start a sketch up here in the top corner and we are going to, this is your three standard planes. So we have a right plane, a top plane, and a front plane. Now, we're gonna start on the right plane because I'm gonna start with the chassis side. So, right side. Now, we've got the holes along the sides of the chassis where the, uh, where like all of these shock mounts and everything those are let's measure them and we're going to probably be able to measure a couple of them and assume that the spacing is equal we'll just check one at 13 millimeters hopefully brett didn't do this in inches so let's uh let's see say that's 13 one 13 one two three four four gaps that should be 40, 52 millimeters from the outside to outside of, or not the outside, center to center of those. It is not 52. Okay. So that's not, not going to be not gonna be able to assume that, so that's okay. Let's just uh, let's start with a couple of things. We're gonna select circles, uh, which is just off the screen up there. So I selected a circle, and we're basically just gonna start by drawing a few circles. They don't have to be equal size or anything like that. Um, I drew four on there, because that's, I think, what I'm going to use. I'm going to do L to select line, or you can click up there, and then I'm gonna hit X, which toggles this little button for construction. Just They're kind of just like guidelines. So I'm gonna go from center to center of each one of those. And then I'm going to select each one of the circles while holding control on my keyboard. Oops. And then I'm gonna hit equal. And it'll make all of them the same size. I'm gonna hit D to add a dimension, or you can click dimension up here. I'm a, I'm a hotkey person. I like to use the keyboard a lot. It makes you faster for CAD. I highly suggest it. So we're gonna make this hole, um, for the chassis side, it would be, you know, it's made for a three millimeter hole, so probably 3.1 or a, a 125 drill. Uh, since I'm gonna be doing the chassis cross brace, I want it to thread in, so I'm gonna use a 2.5 millimeter. And it will scale my drawing to a similar dimension, but that's okay. I'm measuring again the uh, center to set. I think it's 12.5 millimeters. And actually that would then space out because I measured 50. So yeah, it's 12.5 millimeters. I think they are all the same. So we're going to hit 12.5 on that line. And then I'm going to select those construction lines oops, between each of it. 
What is it doing? Oh, I think it might have... Uh, sometimes it will move your... and overlap some lines, but I'm just double checking. Okay, I think they're good. We're gonna hit equal on those, and then it spaces everything out. Oh, Brett says they should be 0.5 inches apart. Using standard like a crazy person? Ah. 0.5 inches. 12.7 millimeters, like a crazy person. Who designs in standard? Thanks for popping in, Brett. So I hit the midpoint constraint and then clicked that line and it just put every, I just like to put everything into an area where, um, where I can, I can work with. So I'm using four holes on the side of this brazen scale chassis. And the, the four that I'm going to use, let's, are going to be this here, 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 and here. You can see I had the shock in one of them. So that's gonna be something we'll think about. And uh, we'll go from there. So those four holes is what we're looking at. I am not using the, the further forward one just because of how close it is to the servo. So that is the reason that I'm doing so. that one so we've got we've got our sketch there those are just the we can do something simple like putting a, a rectangle around it now obviously you can see that's a dotted line so I just selected them all and then I'm gonna hit construction again and it'll make it solid now we have to start making some decisions, how thick we want this part, how um, much space we want on the side between the threaded hole and that, you know, the side of the part. We can measure the height of the side of the chassis if we want it to just kind of flow or give us an idea. 10.7 millimeters. What does that come to in inches since 0.42 inches? Since we know that bread is using standard. The nice thing is, is you can just key in your dimension, your units, and it will do the conversion for you automatically. You can see I typed in 0.42 inches, but it changed it to 10.688 millimeters. So that is a thick piece there, but what we can do is uh, taper it down in the center, take some of that out of it, but it'll flow nicely into the chassis. And there's a couple of other reasons that might be a good idea. So that is uh, part of it. Now let's add a dimension from the center of that hole to the edge of the part. Um, five millimeters is kind of a general rule that I, I like to use. It gives you enough, enough material to the outside that you're not gonna have screws you know, breaking through or anything like that. So that seems to work. Now you can see our top and bottom lines are not defined. They can be moved around. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit L again. We're still in uh, construction, as you can see over there. And we're going to, you can see it highlights that triangle, which means um, the, uh, the midpoint. Then we go over and select to the center line there. Now that can still move everything, but you select this over here, this top button, which is the horizontal vertical constraint, then select that and it just lines everything up and now everything is fully defined for that sketch. So basically you've just made a side profile of what we need. Now, at the very beginning, I kind of told you about those, those planes. I'm gonna finish this sketch right now. I'm just gonna finish sketch, we're done with that. Now, I'm gonna turn on origin there so you can see those three planes. Now, like I said, I designed that on that right plane, but that's right in the middle is how I like to look at it. Um, so we need to do something with this now to, you know, to give, to make it a solid shape. So we're going to hit extrude or you can hit E on your keyboard. Then we're going to select the area that we want to extrude or, you know, extend out. So rather than just doing one side like this and creating the width, I want to keep that on the center line. It's good 
modeling practice to do. So on the right side here in this box, I'm gonna go symmetric. So that means anything I do to one side does to the other. Now, I'm gonna measure this. I did sand down the 3D printed brace that Brazen Scale uh, sells. So my width is going to differ from the width of someone who just bought, um, bought this chassis and that brace. So, but we're just gonna measure this and it comes to 20, two points, uh, I'm still in inches on my caliper, which I hate. 68.6, I mean, I should just round that up to 69, but we'll go 68.6, 68.6, whoops. And now you can see that looks way too wide and that's because it is. And that's because over here on the left side, I've got half length selected. If I go whole length, it will properly move that to the width that we need. And we hit okay. Gordon, cool, thank you, sir, five bucks. Thank you for the lesson. Uh, where were you when we were designing body mounts four weeks ago? <laughs> and Brian Sherwood, some things are still made in the US. I know that, I do it every day, but even us, I still design in the metric system because it is a superior system. And that is the truth. Now, before we get fancy with adding design and style to this, let's just continue our fancy game of connect the dots. So we know that we have these holes along the side of each chassis. This block is the width of the chassis. It is what it is that would bolt in there, except nothing would, you know, be in the correct spot. So we need to add the body post locations. If we just go to this real quick, you can see that my body posts, again, I just screwed them right to the side of the chassis. So I need to make that, I need to be that, they need to be in the same spot, which means I won't be able to have material all the way around them, but that's okay. So I'm going to measure the diameter of these and they are about six millimeters. We're of course gonna give that a little bit of fudge room. Now, I told you I also selected the uh, those four holes along the side of the chassis here. This body post is in the, is lined up with this second hole. So, we're going to do a sketch and we're gonna select this top plane. Now, you're up here, you don't really have any of, you don't know where this is. You could go measure and then make the same things. The easier thing to do is hit P for project and then select that little circle and then hit enter. And now you see you have that little purple line on top where you need it. Um, you could find some offset posts and really complicate things. I could, but I've got what I've got, Brett. We're doing fancy connect the dots today. <laughs> So I hit L for line, X for construction, selecting the center point of that projected line. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit. Then I'm going to hit C for circle. I'm going to hit X for construction to turn it off. Let's connect the dot. And then rather than doing the six millimeters that the body post is exactly, I'm going to do 6.5 millimeters. It gives me a quarter of a millimeter uh, on all sides. And now, like currently, this thing is butted up against the chassis, right? So rather than just kind of drag it and get it close or do the math of 6.5 divided by two and typing in 3.25, we can use constraints up top. So we're gonna use tangent. We're gonna select the circle and select, well, we can either select this edge or the projected line. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So we got that. Now, the next problem is, is that if you cut this hole, which let's just do it. I'm just, we can come back because this is, we'll show you. So I'm gonna hit E for extrude, select that, and we're just gonna drag it down. So this is poor design because even though it connects the dots, you end up with a, a infinitely thin wall right here, which for 3D printing is bad. For almost anything, it's bad. You don't want that in manufacturing of any type. So, I, well, it's generalizing, but either way, it's bad. Now, say you didn't realize that and you did this the first time. You're not, you can just go down to the bottom at the sketch where we have down here. 
We're going to right click and then hit edit sketch and it'll take us back to where we were. Now we have a couple of options. You can just do lines and you can select off the bottom and go up and it'll pop up a little tangent marker, which is a circle with a line next to it. And it's blue, which is fine. Um, you can also do a construction line X from the center and go directly over and then go down hitting X again to turn off construct. Oh, it turned off. It'll snap to something. So this one knows it's tangent and knows that it meets up with the midpoint, which gives us a perfect line. This one here, we did it the basic way. So we can just hit horizontal vertical, two ways to do the same thing. I'm going to hit L again to close off this bottom section. And now we can just, we can finish this sketch and then it's still the way that it was, however. So you can hit edit feature on that extrude that we did and you can select these two things. So now we have a little pocket that our body post will fit into and we'll securely screw into the plastic in that location. Uh, Alex, thanks for jumping in. Um, so technically now you could just 3D print this. Your body post would be more securely fastened because it's got a nice long uh, support section rather than just a single screw that allows it to, to rotate. This would get the job done for you. It really would. There's, I mean, <laughs> like if you just needed a custom body mount, that's all you need. That's, <laughs> you know, now tech, we don't have it on the other side. You have a couple of times you could do it. You could either do it and mirror this sketch. You could edit that sketch again. You could do L for line, start at the origin since we have a nice center point. That's a good reason to do that. And then you could select mirror and mirror the objects of the sketch that you needed and hit the mirror line is that line that we drew and you can hit OK. That's one way to do it. You would finish this sketch and then you would go edit that feature again, selecting now these points up here. Or you can just hit mirror at this point, mirror, and on the right side, rather than bodies, you would do features. And then you would select that feature that we just did down there in the tree. Um, and the mirror plane would be the right plane. And it does the exact same thing. So again, wild simple. This is, but this is 3D design. You can just break everything down. Just connect the dots, worry about what it looks like later. <laughs> just make it work and then go. Um, why not just move in two to three millimeters? The reason that I don't want to is because I already drilled the holes in my body. Um, and I'm just, this may not be the final piece that I use once this is done, but for now I've got a body on this truck to use as a beater and I want, it's 3d printing. It's cheap. It's, I mean, it's damn near free. So I'm just going to make it work rather than put more holes in a body that I just got. So, uh, at this point, I don't find that there's any reason to, you know, add more holes and make this more, um, you know, to find any reason to do that. So that would be the exact reasoning why I would not want to go that route. Now, um, let's see, are there advantages versus disadvantages for making fillets on a sketch versus on an extruded body? I find that it's easier, um, to keep your sketches simple. And the other reason is, is that once I'm just going to go into a sketch for those that don't understand what he's asking, say you have a Say we want to make just a, a lightweight cutout here. You know, we want to just slim this thing down. Um, let's do, let's define this quick just because I like to do that. Say 10, uh, that's too much. Let's do eight. Eight from there. And we're going to go 15 from there for now. So you had this. This is a very lightweight sketch. There's nothing really to it. It's easy, uh, fully defined. Now, as soon as I do a fillet, which is just the rounded corners, if you, you know, if you weren't familiar with that, and I select 
this, once I do this, it's going to blow stuff up and I'm going to lose uh, certain references. So I'm going to do that and say five. Well, in this case, it does it. In heavier sketches, you can start losing the ability to um, have certain geometry be referenced. In very simple ones like this, it actually, it, it held up just fine. Uh, so you could take and then cut that through if you'd like. Oh, freaking out on me for a second. Um, and that would be, that would be one method to go that route. Um, personally, I don't like that. So I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to undo those, uh, those fillets. I like to leave just a very basic square. Hit finish. Same thing, extrude down through. And then I like to use the fillet tool separately, selecting the lines. Now you don't have to see the line to select it. You can select through a body and then, and then do it from there. Um, I like to do that better. Keeps your model lighter. I often don't add my radii until the end. So or my fillets until the end, just to keep things a little bit, a little bit simpler. Um, I don't know if, so I'm going to actually delete that just cause it's not the style that I was going for, even though this is supposed to be just be keeping it simple, but, um, we're gonna do a sketch on top from at this point, like I said, we've got a part that is functional. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit, add a, add some, add lightness, speed holes, add lightness. Um, we're going to do an offset. So I'm going to hit this offset button up here, select the edge, and then we're just going to drag it in. Let's say, uh, I like seven and a half millimeters. Why not? No, I don't. Eight millimeters. There was like a nasty little line segment in the corner when I was at seven and a half. Um, so, Offset there. Now we're going to cut that through there. Now the other thing is, is that I've got these, we're going to select it to here. The body posts on the front, you can see they, they stick up quite a way. So let's, I've got, I mean, I've got 13 millimeters of exposed body post above that. Let's just, let's give this a little bit more reinforcement. So we're just going to hit P for project again and select that whole face. Then we're going to do an offset again. However, up here in this little box that pops up that says chain selection, we're going to deselect that. That way we don't, when we click a line, it doesn't grab the whole outside. And that's needed for a couple of reasons. So we're going to select just those surfaces and then we're going to drag why doesn't it? We're just going to have to key it in. Uh, it went to the inside, so we can either hit flip up here, drag that out. Yeah, let's do four. Um, I am going to clean those up. And then I'm going to hit E, and we're going to drag that up like five millimeter. How's that smell? Actually, let's go four millimeters. And that is specifically because we did an eight millimeter offset before, like for this, this border. So if I do a four here, that leaves me four millimeters out here still. I could do a nice chamfer or a fillet and everything will blend perfectly to the outside. So let's go four. Now we didn't do it on the other side. So we can hit, okay. Let's do a chamfer on that four millimeter. See how it goes perfectly to that edge? Yes, I like it. Simple, nothing, nothing to that. We could mirror it at this point. We have features selected. We could select both of those. Something there. Um, now, this is way thicker than it needs to be. 
Hopefully it prints quicker than it takes. Uh, no, it won't print quicker than it takes to design. That's, that's not how that works. So we need, I'm going to hit P for project and select those two lines, just giving me a couple of points just for, to clean that up. I'm going to just going to go down a bit, come across. I'm not even going to go. I'm just going to go to the midpoint, which is fine. Clean that whole thing up. Do a four mil cut. We can define an angle or a distance, whatever we think. Um, 35 is fine. We're going to mirror those lines over. Select both. Cut through. Now at this point, let's just, things look a little bit better when you add the fillets. So I hit the, uh, the fillet tool. Then let's see. Four millimeter radius cleans that up. that there. We can do the same with these points. Let's go four again. Now let's do a chamfer on these. Actually, let's see if it'll see if it'll do it on all of these and we'll do see if it'll do a one millimeter chamfer yep does that fine just to help make the part look a little nicer same let's see we could do let's see if it'll do it here if I can select just these lines just gonna experiment so these lines are going to be above the chassis rail, just this section. So just to make it look a little bit nicer, we're going to uh, throw a one millimeter chamfer on there. And I'm going to do the same over here at this point. Very nice. And we could do one on the bottom as well. I left the bottom of this perfectly flat for the most part. Uh, and that's just going to help with 3D printing. It gives you a nice solid base. You don't This won't need any support for this part at all. Um, even for these little overhangs, or, you know, these little chamfers, it shouldn't, most 3D printers shouldn't need any sort of support material for that. So there's that little things you could come in and you can add some chamfers on the part where the, the point, the hole, whatever, where the screw enters into the 3d printed part. Even if you just do a half millimeter chamfer, it'll just help the screw go in a little bit easier. It's basic. It's not super needed. You can do more, you can do less. Um, Sometimes it just helps the 3D print look a little bit nicer. You could, I mean, you could do it on the inside ones here even. Champer happy. Champ, chamfering, it's little things like that that are actually, uh, they're big helps. So don't, don't underestimate taking a little bit of extra time in a 3D print. Now, Speaking of taking a little bit of extra time, this now is probably good to go. No reason to, to do too much more except one thing. These holes on the outsides of both go all the way through the part. And that is very much not necessary. So what we can do is 
select a sketch, select that right plane, and then we can just click P for project and grab both of those holes and hit enter. And then we can hit E for extrude. Uh, we're gonna have to select back over and we can select both of those. We're gonna switch back to symmetric again. And at this point, we know what the, the dimension of this was like, what, 60, uh, 68.7 you know, millimeters. But for this, all we're really doing is just making it so that it's not, it's, it's basically for the 3D print to just be a little bit, um, that way you don't have the, the lines out through, you know, you end up with more shells on the inside rather than be able to just cruise through with infill. Uh, it, this will make it a faster print, probably a stronger print too. So. Um, we went 15 millimeters, which is 30 millimeters total, still giving us a good amount of thread uh, on the inside. So we can hit enter. Uh, let me, I'm gonna just show you something there. So I'm gonna, on the bottom here, there's these little arrows, bottom left corner. I can hit the second one and it'll just back me up one step. So at this point now, those holes are still, still through, right? On the top, you can hit inspect and you can do selection and that, or se sorry, section analysis, select that, right? Oh, see, it's a good thing that I did that anyway, because that was an even, an even worse design. Uh, that would have been way too thin. I'm glad that I did it for the reason that I was saying, let alone for the reason that it was really needed. Um, this is why section analysis is also a good thing to do. Uh, that would have been a, a poor it would have printed poorly, it would have looked poorly, and it would have been weak in that area. So now if I move that, will it let me do it? No, it won't let me do it until I cancel or exit, roll that forward. Now let's do a section analysis again. Now you can see that that is filled in and starts right there. Still not too bad. Um, But, I mean, I could lengthen it if I wanted. I think all that I'm going to do is we're just going to go in and drop some chamfers in those inside sections. And we're going to do, it's, what I say, 2.5 millimeters. We're just going to do one millimeter, which is fine. So uh, there we go. Uh, you can leave the cutout and just shorten up those side holes in the bolt. You can just leave the cutout. I think that I think that's basically what I just did, Brett. Right? So what you're saying? So same section analysis. Leave that. Go through, and now I could even I could even move that in a little bit further if I just wanted to be, you know. A little bit safer. Let's go to uh, 18 millimeters. I took three millimeters. So now, yeah, that hole doesn't start until I've got that that beefy 3D printed section. So that's gonna do it for my front body mount. Body mount, cross member, um, you know. Now this this front one, I didn't really need the the cross member part of it. That three D printed one that for the brazen scale chassis is already super rigid. The top of this is is good to go. The rear though, where I need to do the same thing basically, um, I don't have that same. I I have a simple three D printed uh, one that I printed late Friday night before the comp, um, but it's, you know, it's just that one piece and I've got a lot more flex back there than I have up front just because of the lack of support. So I'm going to do a similar type of design for the rear. Technically, I could use almost the exact same thing. We could just modify this design and, and we'd be 
in reasonably good shape, but I think I wanna make it a little bit different because these body posts are all the way at the rear right before this radius turns down. So I'm gonna make it look a little bit different. We are going to save this first. This is going to be a brazen scale front body mount cross member. We're gonna make sure we go back to that so you're not just looking at me. Um, the, the guy in a moose says, I'm more, I'm a radius guy myself. And that's exactly, the, like that's 100% a thing. Some of us are chamfer people and some of us are radius people. That This is like a design thing that happens all of the time. I, I use a mix of both, but I like, I like chamfered edges like this uh, versus radius edges. It's just a, it's a weird thing. Um, you know, part of why, like, if, if I'm trying to, uh, like, justify it to myself, I say that a, a chamfer is better because, like, in situations like this, if this was a radius, you end up with an infinitely steep overhang at first, right? So it, it overhangs a lot and then little, 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 little less and even to none where mine has just got a consistent overhang for 3D printing. There you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I that's why I like personally think about chamfers. I, the reason I like them, especially for 3D printing, you know, in a situation like this, in a corner, it, it plays no difference. So I like the radius look there better. But a radius, I believe, is stronger in the corners. There's no, um, there's no stress risers. It gives it that, you know, stress right. I don't know if you can. A chamfer probably gives a similar, but I think that technically, radius is stronger for that situation. So, pros and cons. For what we're doing, likely, does not matter, but. So we've got that. That was our front one. Now we can go to a rear. We can do it in a new file. We can do it in the same file. I saved this one as front body mount, so that means I should probably do a new one. New file. Guess what? Same thing. Uh, now, just for you know, just to show you the difference. Last time we started with a right plane with the holes, and then did all that. Let's just do it the opposite way this time. We'll start from the top. Like I said, it's just choosing a method. Um, I'm going to hit rectangle and then I'm going to go over here and toggle to a center point selection so I can click on the origin and go just make a rectangle. Now one thing is is that you you are deciding the direction and orientation of this right away. I chose this way uh, even though front is facing towards me in if you look at the little pyramid there. So I could make it more like that instead. And that gives me the right, probably the way that I should do it to be consistent uh, with the other one. But, so we need to make some decisions again. Now, last time we started with the holes in the sides, we kind of knew our distances and all that. At this time, I would have to make a, a decision of how I was going to do that again. Now, since this is the rear, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do less. So. I think Brett was saying they were half inch spacing. So I'm just gonna do uh, three holes rather than four like we did for the uh, the front one. So that's just one inch worth of spa spacing between the actual holes, you know, the, the channels that would be running through the sides like this. Now, I just drew those for a visual, but um, the, technically the distance between these would be one inch and then again I want five millimeters of spacing on I on each side of them you can just draw those construction lines just to give you an idea of of where everything should be and then let's see I still don't know my width so I need to measure the width of the chassis again now my chassis right now is kicked in just a little bit just because the pressure of the shocks so I'm gonna relieve that by hand a little bit. We're just gonna hit 67 millimeters. 
67. So now we have a defined shape. And if we wanted to, we know that the shock mounts on this rear one are in line with this again. So we could just start by drawing a circle. That was our 6.5 millimeters. You can put as much info in each sketch as you want, really. It's, it's up to you as far as uh, how much of it you, you want to throw all at once. We broke it up into multiple multiple portions last time, but that's it's just personal preference. Uh, this time I'm doing it the other way. We're doing the same thing with uh, creating some lines and tangents, then we'll just do a line like that so that I have a mirror point. We'll just mirror some of this geometry now. We'll throw a lot of this in this sketch. Hey, Matt, jumping in. So, like I was saying, this is for a rear, so we could also, um, we can lighten this thing up a little bit if we want to, again, add it all into this sketch versus later ones is, uh, what happened? What if I do? Just playing around with, you know, some looks on things like that. The outsides, we can select those, or select one at least, so negative eight. Since I'm not chaining the selection, it didn't let me, um, oops. Things like that. Let's do, let's just start with something like this. So I selected E on the keyboard for extrude. We're just gonna select some profiles, give us something to work with. What did we do on the front? It was like 0.47 inches. Mm, 0.43 back here. Is that right? Yeah, it's just at 0.429. I feel like I measured incorrectly up front. 0.43. Maybe that's what I think that's what I measured. I already tell I don't like how that looks. So I'm just going to delete those things for now and then we'll work on that. It's okay. So again, we kind of talked about, we just started from one direction. Now we're going to go the other. We're going to, we can either start making the holes from selecting this side plane or we can select the, that right plane, which is the way that I prefer. Oh, the other thing is you can see that now we, our origin is actually at the bottom center rather than in the center of mass of the part, which that's fine as well. Um, we're gonna do 2.5, 2.5. We're going to connect all of those. And I'm going to project one of these edges so that I can do a line to that. And then I'm going to hit that horizontal just to make sure that that all those lines are equal. I'm going to do an equal constraint on those two. 
we're going to add that 0.5 inch spacing. Lastly, I'm going to do another construction line down to the origin and do another horizontal constraint to lock everything there. Now those lines are still blue, which, ah, okay. I just drug them just because I could tell something wasn't perfect. And it's this line here. So now that we have those, <laughs> at this point, it's not letting me select those profiles because the body is in the way. So I can just click, oops, hide the body and select all of them. We can change from one side to symmetric, then we turn the body back on. Cut all the way through. So you can see that we now have all of those holes. Um, you can group sketch and bodies into components to clean up further and combine them to make assemblies. You can, I really don't like how Fusion handles them. It, other CAD packages seem to do that a lot better. Fusions is kind of odd with how, I don't, I don't like it that well. It's okay. Um, it's just not, I don't really care for it. Now, one thing I can see already is I just don't like how much space that I have here. 2.5 millimeters is all, because I went with kind of a standard dimension on that one side. We could go back and edit our initial sketch, but sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes you just want to add it by hand. So I'm just doing a, a top sketch and I'm going to just offset those couple. I'm not even grabbing the third one. We're just going to grab that and I'm going to go, I want at least, say I want at least five millimeters on all of those parts or all the way around that body, you know, it just gives me that. Now I could clean this up and, and close that, or I can just hit P for project and select that edge, which it, it kind of already does. I guess it automatically senses the edges of, of things you're working on. And then we can just extrude that down just to give me that, that consistent amount of material around there. I think that that will be a, a little bit better. And again, depending on where you want to mirror things. I probably wouldn't always mirror them how I'm doing in this uh, particular particular live, but it, it all works the same. So that gives us the start of that. Again, this is just we're connecting dots and this would handle what we needed. You could 3D print this and you would have the ability to have a stronger rear body mount. It doesn't have to be all that, oops. So I wanna do that same thing with adding some material around the uh, top portion. No, we're not gonna do that there. And I did, four millimeters on the other one, right? Which I'm not gonna have the same space here. We're gonna do 2.5 is all. And then we'll go up 2.5. That's got a weird, uh, a weird line there. That, that face should be solid. I don't know why that's like that. I don't like seeing that in a CAD file and it makes me wonder. Huh. That is odd. I don't like it. Okay. We're going to roll with it for now. I just don't like seeing things that are, that are inconsistent. I feel like I'm just going to hit press pull on that face, move it out to there and see if it changes anything. Nope, it won't let me do it. So it, it feels like it's there. Nope. Okay. 
it's going to bug me, but I'm going to try my best to act like I, it's not bothering me and ignore it. You can all just know inside that I'm dying slightly. So, same type of bracing feature that we added to the front version. It's just a little bit, little bit shorter. Um, but combined face. Uh, I combined bodies. I guess I have not used combined face. Um, that's just solid bodies, I guess. So I don't know where combined face is. You'll have to let me know that. Um, so these, that, that's the functional part. That's the, the part that we need. Now I want to make it look less ugly. I'm going to do chain selection we're going to grab that whole inner portion this time and we're going to make this a little bit thinner let's go uh negative four but not because i'm going to leave it that way although we've got a little bit there i need some material to make sure that i'm not capturing the shocks or anything with this so Actually, let's do, I'm just going to go a little bit heavier. We're going to go with uh, five is fine. Just a little bit extra. We're going to cut through. Eh, that's ugly. That bothers me. Do not like the way that looks. Hmm. I can't allow it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to select the lines that I want. We're going to do negative five on those. I'm going to do project a couple of these other ones that and offset those. I'm thinking that might get me the, uh, the distance that I'm looking or that Better. Okay. God dang it. <laughs> it's over here now. Arr. We can fix this one. That's okay. Um, you're thinking com the combined body one. No, that's body won't work. I've seen combined face in SolidWorks, but I, I guess I've never seen that in this one. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to add a, I'm going to do construction line offset and do, uh, to that way. Negative two. Go three. And mirror that feature. Going to do a similar. No, it doesn't like that, but I'm going to project those two lines. We're going to fill that section. 
We're going to see if it will let me. Does not appear so. But we're going to fake it. Just because I can't let that look the way it does. Let me delete that projection. That should let, allow it. Just because we know that this is a half inch and this is bad practice, FYI. I'm just doing it because it's bugging me. I'm sure that I could do it. I could go back and just grab that you know, I could go back and just find this part of the sketch and all that of the initial one, but I'm not doing that. I'm just cleaning it up the long way because it's a live video and sometimes that happens. Um, look at that. Let's add a Cut, can we, just going to visually see what, what it looks like to continue that, that line down. Oops. This is all just, at this point, these are just kind of stylistic it's what you want to do what you want it to look like i don't like just because of that shelf and how that all looks not a fan so we will Give it a little bit of breathing room between there. What was that? 2.5 maybe? I can measure quickly to inspect 2.5. Yes. So 45 degrees. Comp yesterday went really well. The truck did great. Um, first course was super rough. I mean, I didn't, it was the first, I didn't even drive the truck other than, you know, accidentally into the, uh, my coffee cup on the bench. Uh, I didn't drive it at all before the first course. And, uh, I don't think that it was me not understanding how the truck was driving. It just, I needed, oh, I also started the, uh, I also started the course with my steering reversed because I didn't even check that smart guy move. Um, but, oh, that didn't like that for some reason. That was weird. Oh, it was just the old sketch that was still, uh, or the old one that was still active. So, but the, the truck did fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, how it drove and we uh, had a good result. I haven't seen the actual results of the comp yet. I'm going to see how. Okay, I think we'll be able to make that look okay. This could be the ugly section. Ah, that's gonna be okay. So, 15% of the time is making a function part, 8% of the time is making a nice part. It, yeah, it is. I mean, if you don't care, then you are you can be off to the races in no time. Um, but if you care about what things look like and, you know, We're gonna go with a non-uniform radius there just to a uh, typical rush. I got a lot done on that truck. I, I don't feel bad at all about what or how everything went down. I should have closed that one up at the same time I was closing that. So let's find where I did that. I did that there. We're gonna go back, edit sketch, 
and then we're going to mirror those to that point, hit OK. Now, I don't, that only worked to a certain extent, but that's okay. This doesn't give me a ton of thread length, which isn't great, but this is only a body mount at this point. The, um, the front one incorporated the shock mount. This one, not the plan at this point. I could probably, I mean, if I, Let's leave that for a second. What? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do what I just, what I just did. We're going to take that to there. I may come back and uh, add a little bit more to that. We'll see. We shall see. I think we're going to run into that similar situation with the radius in this corner, but this is you know, if this was a part for production or something like that, sure, you could worry more. But this is a part for a truck that I don't even know if this is going to be the part that stays on it. I just want to beef up the body mounts for the time being so that as I get more drive time in on it, everything stays where it should. We're going to throw just some fillets. Let's see. 1.5. And we need a couple of more on these before we can add our chamfers. Three there. And chamfer. And then this thing is basically going to be wrapped up. We're just going to throw, oh, I forgot one. That's okay. We'll just add it. Doesn't make for a clean tree down at the bottom when you keep adding things like that, but now we could throw some like half depth chamfers on these just to 0.5 millimeters. Radius the crossbars up enough to cover the screw tips. It will look production. I'm this one. I think I'm fine with that'll give me enough thread. This one goes through, so I should be okay. These I just feel like I wanted to add that radius, and I might actually. I don't know. We'll see. It's probably good enough. Could be an easily, uh, easily adjusted thing later, but that's a rear cross brace. So we did a front, front and a rear. That pretty much covers that hour and 15 minutes to get those, uh, those couple of things done. Even on live, if I was doing it not live and I mean, honestly, I probably would spent more time if I wasn't live just cause I'd be like, I don't like that. I'm going to redo it. I mean, I don't like that, but yeah. I uh, apologize if you've already said, but are you printing this in PETG or PLA? Also, when you print PETG on your Prusa, do you use the smooth or textured build? Um, most of like the structural things that I've been printing, I've even been using uh, PETG on my Prusa. Um, when I'm printing PETG, I use the textured bed. 
I was printing PETG last night, so that's the textured bed. Um, and I do use, I've been using a little bit of glue stick when I've been using the textured bed. So, um, and I use the Prusament Black PETG. It's what I've been using on the class one for structural parts as well. Um, so yeah, and three hours to print that. You're probably about, let's, uh, so after you've finished your part like this, to export them, you don't don't go through the whole like export process. It takes forever out of Fusion. If you just go right click on the body and hit save as mesh, hit okay, and I do brazen front body mount. We go to the rear, same thing, expand the body list, right click, save as brazen rear body mount. Uh, I've got my Prusa slicer open. So that was a, uh, it's one of the molds for the class one truck. So if I go new project, don't need to save, uh, we'll discard those settings. Um, and then we're going to hit control I to import, select both of our parts, hit open and perfect. We're just going to print them all intertwined. It will go much faster. So probably rotate just because uh, on the Z 90. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then it's already set up for Prusa PETG. MK3, 15% infill, that's fine. Brim, this shouldn't need any supports. Supports are off. Slice, let's see what this says. Time used uh, two hours, 52 minutes. Good. Guess Brett. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let me know if you want to sell that Prusa printer. If I buy the XL, maybe, but maybe not. I might just keep them both. That Prusa is a bad beast. So, first time catching you live. Why does your link point to an Ender when you obviously have a Prusa? Because a Prusa is a thousand dollars. The Enders are like under three hundred. If you just want a place to start, pick up a cheap printer, have fun with it. Um, and then you can, you know, you can upgrade later if you like. I've had a lot of 3D printers. I love the Prusa, um, but if you don't want to spend a thousand dollars, then I get it. I mean, people who know they want a Prusa, know they want a Prusa, I think. You know, it's, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, is there something specific to be aware of? I already have. Yeah. Oh, if you already have a Prusa, I think you probably know. <laughs> um, Andrew three V two. Great. Honestly, that for $300, it will do like 90% as good as the Prusa, maybe 92 or 3%. Um, yeah. And so, 15% infill, won't the screw holes be weak? Uh, no, because you've got enough shells and things like that that it it's honestly just fine. Um, so no, 15% is fine. I mean, you could go up to 20, 25, but yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, and so there's, once you, there's a, what's the guy? CNC Kitchen has got some great videos on infill percentage and, ha, you know, the actual strength that you get as you increase it, not nearly what you would think. Um, so it's, it is surprising. It's, it's cool stuff, but let's see. Um, yeah, we're at 1120. I don't know that we need to keep going unless you guys want something quick that we can do in 30, 40 minutes. Uh, but 
beyond that, I think that we could probably wrap this thing up. I've probably got plenty to plenty to get done. I'm sure that you guys have Sunday things to get done as well. Uh, there's a guy that I get my early 4th 3D printer by selling, an Ender 3 for 175 if any, oh, anyway, just selling a used one. I don't, man, just the shipping of it, like, it's almost worth, them to just, worth it to just buy new ones. So, let's see. Yeah, I think that we're probably good. I appreciate you guys uh, jumping in. Happy Sunday. I'm gonna throw these on the printer because I'm gonna use these parts. I need them. Need them. Uh, yeah. Have a great weekend. With that, thanks for joining. Again, I don't know that I'm not bringing STL Sunday back every weekend for sure, but with the new year, doing the things that I want to do most, I really like doing these streams just because they're. I enjoy this stuff a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do them when I want to, but I'm not going to be super worried. So hit the like button if you want to check back in next Sunday, possibly. There you go. Um, uh, Brett saying, if it's easy enough to widen the front mount to 70 millimeters, it could be useful to others. That's what did I make the front one to? 68.6 I mean we could just even if I went to how I drew that what if I just do no did I, oh no I did the outside so it's just on this one so if we just go to 70 at the beginning everything rebuilt properly. 70 millimeters, look at that. So yeah, I'll upload that. Um, I could pro, the rear probably doesn't matter as much um, for width, but is 70 millimeters what would be easiest there too, Brett? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get that uploaded. And I designed these around the uh, Vanquish body posts, which are the six mil diameter. I'm sure there's others that are six mil. Um, I just don't know them off the top of my head. So, yeah, normally run 67 on the rear anyway. Oh, huh. sweet, look at us. Look, would you look at that? Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm gonna get these uh, files uploaded. I'll throw them on my Thingiverse. Uh, I've also got those, uh, those other files that you were mentioning, John. So I'll get those thrown up there also. So have fun and I will uh, see you guys next time. Later. Bye.